Hello and welcome to another one of Adamonic's Review. This is on Star Wars The Force Awakened. Um, this is a spoiler talk of the movie, so if you didn't see it, you should leave because we're going to talk about the movie and stuff. Um, I'm joined with my friend Alex. Uh, his link to his Twitter will be down below in case you want to go ahead and follow him for his shenanigans and whatever. Um, in the background is me making the First Order emblem in Black Ops 3, um, just so you have something to watch. So... Mr. Alex, how did you like the movie? Um, overall, I enjoyed it a lot. I think that's the closest to the way original fans felt watching Star Wars in the theater that I'm ever going to get. Um, since I kind of grew up not seeing those in movies on VHS the first time. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I liked it. It was well put together. All right, sorry. Um, what was... I, I would agree. Um, I did enjoy the movie. Um, I was fucking hyped as shit when I saw that thing. Like, I came out the theater like, yeah, fucking saw Star Wars. Um, so, what would be your favorite part out of the, like, or one of your favorite parts out of the whole movie? Um, I'm going to be a jerk face because my favorite part was probably when... Han Solo died in terms of an actual event, like a thing that happened in the movie, mm -hmm. but only because I felt like I was ahead of the movie at that point, and they needed to get that out of the way. Yeah, I kind of, I, I, I've, I forgot how I found out, or at least how I kind of felt like I knew he was going to die. I was just more of like, how are they going to do it? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad with the result of how they did it, where they had Ren, um, necessarily <laughs> Ben. <laughs> his real name they had they, he didn't just die over some bullshit it wasn't like oh look he was in the shit the shit blew up it, they didn't half ass his death and that's what I appreciate I agree with that you basically had to if Han was going to die there needed to be some type of emotional resonance to keep propelling the movie forward mm -hmm. and to make Kylo Ren more of a personal villain for us so I yeah I appreciated that that they were able to do that. I just looked at it and I was like that was brave, AJ, because original Star fan Star Wars fans are gonna hate you, like for so long for this. I'm I sorry. think I, I think another one of my favorite parts of the movie is Ren himself as a character when his mask is on. I have because like. When his mask is on, he walks, he's, he's intimidating, he's threatening, he, for some odd reason, we, like, he takes off his mask, he, he talks in, like, full senses, like, when he, his mask is on, he gets straight to the point, he's just like, what else, what do you need, give me the map, you have it, give me the map, what else you want, get out of my face. But when he takes off his mask, he starts talking longer, which, I guess it's okay, it's fine, um, but one thing I did like about Ren is that when he walked, you, like, heard his footsteps. Like, it made it seem like he was more powerful and everything like that. And that was something I really appreciate. I thought he was a, a good evil villain bad guy. I wish he was more badass. I mean, that's probably... I, my, my, um, I was expecting a super badass villain. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. I mean, he's still badass, but he wasn't as badass as I wanted him to be. And that's probably... Don't, the major downside of the movie to me, but that's just my personal thing. I like bad so, people. <laughs> so that actually becomes an interesting question. So you're saying that you don't feel like he was as badass as you would want him to be. Well, when I really think about it, because like, this is something I was watching from other videos and stuff like that. Like They were saying Ren has never fought another as far as we concerned has never fought another Jedi. Um which is why when he fights Ray and Finn, he's not like, oh look, I'm about to stomp them in the ground. Um so I from what I was you know, when I was watching stuff like that, he's never fought another Jedi. He only really uses his lightsaber to like slash a foe that he's that tell prison and just use it to imitate, uh, imitate, uh, not imitate, to scare people and stuff like that and, you know, bring fear. And that's really it. He's never really actually mastered using a lightsaber, which is why Ray and Finn were able to not necessarily beat, well, Ray was able to beat him, um, 
but you know, able to hold their own. So okay, so it it's interesting that you say that because I looked at that a little bit more analytically, right? So <clears throat> they went above and beyond what they needed to do to show us that he was injured at that point already, to the point of doing the whole blood in the snow, seeing mm-hmm. him get swiped again. So I think what they were trying to get to is that this dude is so powerful in the force that at the beginning he stopped a plasma bolt and was just walking around with it just standing there holding it in place so he's pretty powerful but at this point he's been shot he's been stabbed again after that so yeah. he's not using his whole potential but Joe, yeah at the, at the same t- front to me that made me feel like they un- undercut their villain mm-hmm. was the part where she's in the cage and he can't get the information for him from him like the actual use of the force as opposed to them fighting because we've seen her you know do a little bit of fighting with the staff so she yeah had to yeah that was something i was talking about is that she looks like she can defend herself being a scavenger on that planet living by herself she obviously has to learn the basics of just defending herself so that's why I wasn't really like, how the fuck does she know how to use lightsaber? It's, like, it's pretty much just a sword, all right? Um, yeah. I yeah. really wish that during the fight, she cut, like, at some point in time, Finn and Ray, or at least one of them, cut themselves with the lightsaber just to show that they're not fully mastered or, hey, look, they're, they still need to learn how to use this thing. Not something like, hey, they cut off an arm, but just something to where they hurt themselves using the lightsaber. I think that would have really sold, like, hey... They don't really know how to use this thing, but they kind of do. Um, I think that would have been a plus, but that's something I didn't like. Is like at the beginning of the movie, he's able to stop a bullet and use the force, and then carry about his day like it's like he's not even doing it. But um, I really, I it made it you know made it seem like he was strong in the force because I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Like period, and like even like the anime, the Star Wars, the Clone Wars, or in the movies. Um, and I kind of wish they did something else to portray him being strong in the force by doing something like, holy shit, he did that. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I guess, uh, to me, it kind of makes sense. That's a, that's actually another part of the movie that I thought was pretty cool, is when they were kind of, you know, he was trying to get the information. Because, at least to me, it felt like she was a strong, you know, strong independent woman that's kind of like, you know, you don't... Like, like, fuck you, first of all. And second of all, you don't... No, I'm not giving you the map. Because, like, at the beginning of the movie, when Finn would take her hand, she hated it every time. Like, stop doing that. Like, she doesn't like, I guess, being, you know, being treated like a woman. Like, hey, she's a woman, she's weak. And I felt that gave her, like, a good mental capacity. To not, maybe, I don't think the struggle should have been... Like, I kind of like how the struggle went where he wasn't in- instantly just giving information. All right, cool, you have it. I-, I like that she was able to fight back. And I, when I really think about it, I think the only reason why she necessarily won that debate, so to speak, is because uh, when they were using the Force, she was able to get in it in his head and able to see that, hey, he wants to be like Dark Vader. And she's like, yeah, you're never going to be like Dark Vader. And that kind of hit him emotionally. And he's kind of like, well, fuck. I need to go walk off, and that's why I, that's why I, I like that scene. I agree with that because you can tell during the course of the movie that he's in, uh, what's what, like some kind of emotional turmoil at different yeah. points. So I can give you the past, knowing enough about Star Wars and the Force and all that good stuff now to say, okay, maybe his focus wasn't where it needed to be during mm-hmm. that sequence of events, and that's why she was okay with you know being able to use it. Mm-hmm. But her awakening was really. Yeah, I'm just gonna. S- s- she has to be Luke's daughter. Like, there's no way she is that strong. Like, like it can make sense either way, but she's too strong in the force. Like, how long? Did, how long? How long did it take Luke to be able to? Uh, like, how long did it take him to like summon his lightsaber? And she did it. And she in one movie it took like three movies for him. Like. She, mm. She's a little bit too strong in the forest. I see. I don't know if she is. I think th- what you're getting in this movie is a little bit more like um, the beginning of the Force Unleashed, right? Where uh, Star Killer is a little kid and he pulls um, 
Darth Vader's lightsaber away. It's just more so like you don't know what you're doing yet, so you're all raw power. Um, yeah. Another example of that is they do this with like young Jean Grey a lot in um, in X Men fiction. So mm-hmm. again, I'm, there are a bunch of passes going out in this movie. Um, yeah. Like we haven't even big talked about my biggest pass yet, but that's more so one of those. Like I think she's just overdoing everything because she doesn't know. Shouldn't have control yet. I guess so. That and that can make sense. Um, because usually they're trained. Usually Jedi's are trained from a young age, and they grow as their power grows. Um, their power over it grows with it. They're able to control it more. So her being a little bit, I don't actually remember her age. Um, but her being older, she has more power for just being older, and she just doesn't know how to control it. So. I guess that makes sense. It wasn't necessarily that big of a deal to me. I mean, it's just like, it would make sense if she was just Luke's kid, but like, I guess I'm, I'm fine with either way. If, if they are able to fully explain this in the next one, which is I'm hoping like it's Star Wars The Force Awakens is just like, here's the opening, here's the characters. The next movie is, hey, here's their backstory. Here's why they do this. Here's why they act like this, blah, 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 blah. And the, then it's going to be like the finale of like okay everything's getting settled and this is the end of the trilogy da 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 um because i'm not, uh, one of my pet pe- at least not my pet peeve but just one thing i didn't really like about the movies they didn't explain anyone's backstory where the fuck like finn's a stormtrooper all right um he was taken away from his parents or his his parents and everything like that and then that that time on Jakku was his first time being a stormtrooper. I know he did like, uh, he was a like the janitor, so to speak. So, I'm yeah, I'm assuming they're not gonna send the janitor out to do fighting. I'm sure they just picked him at random. I can give that slide. So I can assume he's been working with the first order for about a month. I don't see him maybe a year. Like I don't feel like he's been with them since he was young. I don't think he's been a stormtrooper since he was a kid. So, uh, the way they described we're... that was that they actually were um, that they okay. So they basically were kidnapping the kids at a really young age, and then constricting them and training them and everything like that. But he ran away during his first actual battle. So <clears throat> think of it more like an army base. Like you might. Have janitorial duties, but if combat breaks out, you're still kind of expected to fight. So he wasn't like a janitor in the legit sense. It's just more so like that's what he was doing is repair work and janitorial and stuff like that. I guess so. Like, I guess I'm. I'm I can understand them not fully explaining Ray. Like her backstory, it's not as clouded as everyone else. So I'm not really upset with her backstory that much. Um, Ren's backstory, like, how the fuck did he become evil? Like, I understand Le- uh, he was sent off, and that's when they lost him. But what the fuck happened? <laughs> like in between, yeah, between thirty years. Them sending him off. Um, because- that's a Star Warsism. Like, that's one of the things that I always am giving a pass. Like, one of my coworkers was saying today that as much as a giant fan star wars fan she is she didn't like it because of where they started it but i feel like that's a star wars thing it always starts in the middle of a story um and wants you to fill in the rest but i feel like we got the most about his backstory than we did of anyone else's um so he's a bastardization of a couple different things so like in the expanded fiction before they got rid of it ben was luke's kid and then um han and leia had twins so one of the twins went dark side and then ben was usually with luke or whatever so there's a couple things that i feel like we're we're probably going to get that aren't necessarily expanded fiction Mm -hmm. but I think we're seeing an issue of him having these famous rebel parents and either having to live up to it or be a kid that throws tantrums. Because some people say he's whiny for throwing the tantrums. I appreciate the fact that 
he has these quote unquote hyper emotional moments and he just destroys stuff. I, yeah, I mean? like I understood. I appreciated that too. I mean, yeah, at least, I mean, on the negative side, yeah, it does make him like a little whiny. Um, but I can understand it because at least to me, he he is second in command um, with that first the, the lieutenant, like the human guy. Um, sh- hold on, we had a call disconnect. Uh, one moment. Ah, uh, there you are. Um, My Skype crashed. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Ren was in second in command, or not even second in command. He was equal to the the human guy whose name I can't remember because I'm bad with names. Um, that were that would both report uh, report to Snook, or is it, is it Snook? Snick? Snook? Snook. Snook. Um. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't like I'm top dog. I'm in command. You listen to me. And I felt like. He he, I feel like he's he thinks he should have been like, hey, I'm the Sith. I know how to use a lightsaber. I should be at the top command. You guys should listen to me. Fuck him. I report to Snoop, and he was always like, he always had some like he couldn't do whatever you want. Like he couldn't just like, all right, I'm gonna go fucking there, do that. You're just gonna sit there and chill because I'm in command. And I think that's something that he didn't naturally like, and that's why he kind of threw tantrums. Because if he like, hey, if he wanted to like, hey, I'm gonna go. F- fucking do that he can't really do that because he's not top dog he still has someone else that's just as equal to him and i guess that explains at least not fully explains but why he's kind of like uh why he throws his tantrums because he can't necessarily do what he want i can see that i see him like i see that relationship is very parental like snoke is that super strict parent Mm-hmm. Um, and then he has this sibling that every time he can't just do what he wants, just kind of rubs it in his face. Like, yeah, like, dad's gonna be so mad at you when he gets home. And then yeah, he, goes and throws a and he got the girl, back. but we didn't get the droid because he thought the girl was good enough, and he didn't even get the information from her. Right, like, and that dude seems to really enjoy being a dick. It in. <laughs> yeah, Ronald Weasley seems to love it, basically. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I feel like we'll see a an evolution of that. The other thing is, as much as people are like, "Oh, it's kind of whiny that he throws tantrums," I'm waiting for the moment where he has an actual investment and is angry and is fighting someone. Yeah, throwing I'm, the tantrum. You I'm, I'm I mean? yeah, I'm waiting for that because I feel like Ray is gonna be a dual lightsaber person, like. I feel like she's going to be like Dark Maul with the dual lightsaber, and I feel like I, at least this would be cool to me is that let's say she's fighting Ren, right, and they're just going at it, and he starts like, "Hey, she's a, like I beat you before" or something like that, or through his mind he's like, "She's beaten me before," and that kind of throws him on the tantrum, and then like at that point in time she like reveals that, "Hey, I'm actually using a dual lightsaber." And and then they go at it. I think that would be a pretty cool scene. Cause then she's using the f- her full lightsaber, and at the same time he's fucking pissed off and mad, and you know putting that rage to use towards her. I think that would have been a, a cool setup for a fight. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I'd say I think it would be cool if whatever her weapon ends up being, if she's not going to use Luke's lightsaber, I think if that would be cool if they did that as a nod to their best villain that they didn't use enough, which would be Darth Maul. Yeah. Like, okay, so this is what Darth Maul would have been if we gave him three full movies of just being ridiculous with a bow staff lightsaber. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that would be interesting since she's been running around with the staff this whole time. Yeah, anyway. like... I feel like it's not going to be, I feel like that's going to be like a hype moment, like regardless of how they do it, I feel like they're going to like, oh look she's using one lightsaber and out of, out of nowhere like a Sith comes out or whatever and she's like, oh hold on let me turn on the other one, alright cool let's go. Right, right, she can just go all so Katano on people. Um, outside that, uh, I'm trying to think of other parts I liked. Um, I really do like how, like, when he walked, he was like, yo, this, he's, he's walking, he was, I'm trying to, 
I like how easily he was willing to pull off his mask. That's one thing I definitely did appreciate. Yeah, I... I understood the idea of him being a Vader fanboy. I really don't like that mask, considering some of the other masks that have been used in Star Wars. Canon. Is it like, is it the whole is it the him having a mask or him or the type of mask he's using, like the design of the mask itself? The design of the mask itself. I don't okay, like. I can, like, I I can agree with that. He had some kind of like Darth Revan like face piece mask or something like that. I didn't like the silver across the top and the shape of the, the face piece i can understand it that opened, it was really cool when it opened yeah i can understand that um i feel like it should have more of a design to it i feel like it was too bland like mm-hmm. i i like the i like the mask and it's all right i just feel like it could have been better agree um but i did like how it opened too and i was like and then he saw his face, so I was kind of disappointing. But that was that was one of the things that I really appreciated when he was when she's like, "You're not tough. You're hiding behind a mask." And he was like, "I don't know. Let me just mask." Yeah, I I I I'd appreciate that. It's just him himself. Like he to me doesn't look like I'm a badass. I'm evil. Fear me. Right. But it's you know I'm hoping that changes in the next movie, and he's fucking like. Yo, I'm a badass. Fuck you. I finished my training. I know how to use this thing. I'm gonna fuck you up. You're gonna die. Not right. cocky, but like, yo, you about to get wrecked. Right. You know what I think I realized? I think the thing about the mask that bothers me is it doesn't really shape, like, follow the contour of, of face. Yeah, it, 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 it's too wide on the bottom. I think that's it. It could be. Um, yeah. So, what did you not like about the movie because i already talked like my, pretty much mine is that he's not as bad as i want him to be in the backstory and then the ending i didn't like the ending um like i, Wait, you I didn't like the ending i didn't like the ending all right um because it was too long for them to not say anything like if it would have been like yo here's here's your lightsaber and he took off his hood and then that's it that would have been fine but then they like panned out and had him like here's Luke, here's her, here's Luke, here's her. Let's pan out and they're just standing there and it's like that looks a little bit awkward. If they were gonna have that ending scene be that long, they should have said someone should have said something. Luke should have like, hey, that's mine. Hey, how's it going? How'd you find me? What's up? Something. No, no. Because I feel like like if I. I prefer if they didn't like I prefer as soon as his hood went down it went to the ending I prefer that would be my prefer ending um but they I feel like they drew it out too long and it was too awkward so that scene had to have an elephant in the room which is this girl found him he didn't he left a map to be found but we don't know a bunch of things about him or her at this point, and we don't even know if he wants that lightsaber. Like, that's, I don't I know. C- I like the, 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 how open the ending of that movie was. Of I feel like we <laughs> literally have to wait over a year and a half to figure out if he even takes that from her. May, May 17, 2017, I believe. But. I, I don't know. It just felt too awkward to me, and that's pretty much like they could have done anything else. Just not. I just. It, I just felt it was too awkward. That's just a little bit too awkward. That's it. That's yeah. Um, I needed that. I needed that awkward scene as much as I, I was, needed him solo to die, man. I, I I wish there was an after credit scene. I wish like I don't know what it would be because now, now that you told me that. Like, Luke doesn't, you know, doesn't even know if he wants to accept the lightsaber or anything like that. Because before you told me that, I thought it would have been really cool if, like, the ending scene is them two training. Or them two, like, just walking and talking, even if they're not saying anything important. Just, like, they're interacting with each other or something like that. No, Um, you got to leave it open. Like, what if the next movie opens and the first thing he says is, Rin, I am your father. I personally would be mad. But how tight would that be to start the movie on? Like, I like that. Okay, so there's two things. And this I heard someone else say. I can't remember who. But they were basically saying, like, you, like, if that is her dad, then 
there's no way that they do one of those Star Wars moves where they don't finish that scene. Like, no matter what happens, you have to tell us what happened the moment that she handed that lightsaber out. Yeah. Because now we're going to be... Like, what happens next? Yeah. Months. So... Right? Like, one of, the, one of the things I was talking about with friends, which it makes sense, sort of, um, is that 30 years ago, d- second Death Star blows up, blah, 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 blah. Luke's like, hey, I'm going to start training Jedis. All right, cool. They have the kid. It's Ren, it, or Ben, before he turns evil. Ben is like, hey, he's training with Luke a little bit. For some odd reason, they send Ben off for whatever reason. Um, and... I want to say because of something Luke has done, or not necessarily something Luke has done, but something he didn't do or something like that, like he neglected training him or something like that, like he thought he was good, like something happened between Luke Ren that turned Ren evil, and then I'm assuming that's not the only reason, but like one of the main reasons, Ren turns evil, he does something evil, and Luke kind of abandoned everyone because of that. Because then that goes. This is just with the story of Luke being uh, not Luke, but Ren being Luke's kid. Um, is that when he goes off and abandons Ren? Um, Ren is left as a kid on Jakku, and that's the person she's looking for. The person she's staying on Jakku for is waiting for her father, which is Luke. But Luke's never going to come because he's ashamed and runs off. But that's necessarily what happens and that's why it like that explains why ren is strong in the force because she's luke's kid who she's waiting for and why they never came because it's luke what explains why you know ben ren's uh ren's evil because he's like 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 luke told ren about dark vader and blah 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 blah. and he's like i kind of like he's like i want to be like him or you know that makes sense or you know you know something that turns him to the dark side and like luke wasn't able to turn him back to good and he you know, like runs off to be evil or whatever and like luke abandons everyone and not necessarily starts up you know the you know what happens in between this and the last movie see okay so this theory bothers me one because i don't want them to do it i don't want any more star wars parentage hidden any of that i can understand however, that <laughs> however and this gets into my overall criticism of the film, which I'm sure we'll get to. So my other thing with that is from the flashback, Ren made, seems old enough when she gets left behind to know who her parents are. But also um, Lupita Nyong'o's character, who I cannot think of her name right now, the little short orange lady. I can't she, think of her name either. She basically says at some point, you seem to know that whoever you were waiting for is long dead. So I'm hoping her I, parents are somebody and they're gone. And I thought she's going to train her. I thought, I thought she said long gone. Like, they, like, there's a chance that they could be alive, but we highly doubt it. I don't think she said dead, but I can understand either way if she said dead or not. Um, but I can understand that. Oh. oh, like another thing I didn't like about the movie. I hate how they destroyed the fucking uh, Stark Planet Killer in the first movie. Like, I was hoping they disable it, and, oh. like, it's something they have to worry about in the next movie. Like, I don't know, I just, it so, took them 30 years to build that, and they, and they uh, of course they kill it five seconds before it shoots. Of course. So, well, yeah, but it shot once already. Yeah. So, okay, so here we go. I'm, I can't get into my actual criticism of this movie without, um... It get into this part of the conversation with you without getting into that. Yeah, so go for it. My actual thing about this movie is that I really enjoyed this movie, but I feel like I already saw this movie, and it was called The New Hope. So yeah, that's way, I heard that too. There's way too many familiar beats from the first movies that had to be fan service, and while I appreciate fan service, J.J. Abrams for doing that, yeah, like. The, the movie follows the exact same beats. Like, this lonely person on this desert planet finds a droid that has information that the Rebel Alliance needs in order to succeed in their plan. And <clears throat> during that, the course of that, some planet is destroyed. They go to a cantina. Um, and then they defeat the giant freaking 
star killing thing that killed the planet, etc. Yeah. With this hulking dude in all black bearing down on them. And that's a super overgross generalization, and I understand that. But this movie I love and dislike for the same reason, which is I feel like I saw this movie, which made me love it and feel like this is probably what it felt like to watch Star Wars in the theater for the first time. So, mm-hmm. like, some little kid is going to love Star Wars forever because of this movie now. Obviously. But for me, I've seen this already, you know? Yeah. Um. What else What else is some other parts I didn't like about the movie? I feel like the movie was rushed. Like, I feel like they put too much into... I feel like the movie should have been like an, like another hour long or something like that. Like, should have been a little bit longer. Uh, see, I don't think they needed that much time. I feel like we'll get an extended release of this movie, but the problem is J.J. Abrams said everything he wanted to put in the movie got in it. Got put yeah. in the movie. But it needed to feel like an epic, like a chase movie, so it had to move fast. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I just... A little bit longer. Just, just a little bit. I mean, I did like a light tipper fight at the end. Up, oh, lost him again. Up, oh, nope, didn't mean to call. Hold on. Give me a minute as we watch Star Wars. In the background. I guess we'll turn on the sound so we can. can he- yeah, there you are. Call dropped yeah, again. Drop. Yeah. So yeah. don't do this from your phone next time. Don't do this from my computer next time. We'll do this. All right. Um, I just felt like the movie should have been longer. Um. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know where I dropped last time. Um, I was just talking about how I should have been the movie just longer. That's about it. Oh, okay. So, that's one thing that I won't, I won't add into. Um, that one I'll leave because I feel like that we'll probably get a, an extended cut, but it won't have too much more. They I'm were hoping. able to do this movie without a ton of exposition, which is cool. Um, but that also means there are a lot of assumptions that we are seeing this movie and know stuff, you know? So Mm -hmm. I don't, I wouldn't even necessarily say they explained the force except for the scene where he's like, it's all true. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's all they really needed. Like you guys heard the rumors. This shit's been, you know, spreading around for 30 years. You like, you heard the rumors, you heard this, you heard that it's all true. That's all they really needed. (laughs) Like they didn't need a. Ex- they didn't. I, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do any. Like they didn't need to explain anything else. Like, yo, it's all true. Moving on. Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. I'm trying um, to think. There's something else. I like. It wasn't even just something. I I thought at the end of the movie, Ren got something cut off, like a leg or something, because she sliced his cape. I swear. I I swear she took a leg. I want to like I want to say they took a, uh, took one of Rin's leg, probably the left leg, but he definitely yeah. had the scar on his face. Um, so I'm hoping to see how that turns out. Yeah, he looks like he's gonna have the Anakin scar on his face, um, but they weren't really clear on what other damage he took. Yeah, like if he's gonna come back with some kind of prosthetic or not. Um, I'm interested to see. Oh, if they do that. Another thing was Finn being good with a lightsaber. Now, at least not being good, but able... I mean, yeah, he lost, but able to hold his own against Finn, Ren. Like, he's a star trooper. Their main weapon is uh, cannons. Um, why the fuck is he able to use a lightsaber? Why is he able to use a lightsaber? Like, is well, like is he uh, randomly just Mace Windu's kid and we just don't know about it? Because Mace Windu's... Yeah, it's, he's technically not dead. Last time we saw him, he was lightning bolt out of a. Uh, he was lightning bolt. He's no, his arm was cut off, and he was lightning bolt out a window. I mean, he would probably launch, but uh, he could have survived. Um, he can't be Mace's kid though, because yeah, he's way I mean, older. Um, 
No, somebody on my job said that today. I started cracking up. I was like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously like, joking, obviously, but I'm like, how is he able to use a lightsaber? Um, yeah, he didn't use well, the force, but like, I mean, I can yeah. like it. Would, it would have been cool if they did like a backstory and he's like using a melee weapon to like slaughter people or something like that before he's like, all right, I'm I'm done doing this. I'm done being evil or you know some dramatic event that makes him to stop being a stormtrooper. Trooper, but no, he just. Hey, look! I've never held this before. I'm pff, I'm pretty good with it. Yeah, but he wasn't really like. This is one of the things that I'm going to again. I'm telling you, I'm giving a bunch of passes to this movie right now. Yeah, I give like, a pass on that, but things, still, this is one of the things I'm giving a pass to. So, for for him, I'm giving a pass to bad lightsaber fights because neither of these fights were actually good lightsaber fights, and I liked. <laughs> As much as people hate on the prequel movies, that's one area that was never bad. The lightsaber fights were always ridiculous. So it's not like he was an expert. Like he was fighting True. the one dude uh, yeah. with the lightsaber that had the fake like bow staff thing. Mm. But at the Which same time, out of nowhere came out of nowhere. Like I'm just gonna put my gun down. Like I think they should have sold like um. So like, for yeah, they should have, like, yeah, sold, not. they should have did, like, some, not necessarily family thing, like, hey, yo, they were friends at Stormtrooper, hey, they kind of knew each other at Stormtrooper, they were kind of friends, like, like, they were brothers, they were, like, something to make it a little bit more emotional, because he's just, like, traitor, and I'm like, does he know him? And then he kills him, and they're just like, alright, cool, next scene. Like, that's it? Well, yeah, but he's not but gonna, like, people. not gonna, like, all take people. off his mask, and, like, my brother, I'm sorry, like you're with mother now you're with your daughter like nothing no 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 emotional I mean, it's, it looked it set it up to be an emotional fight so to speak and then nothing this movie I'm, I'm gonna express a theory on that in a second but like this movie already has so much like hand yeah. holding going on already yeah that i appreciate the fact that they didn't do that the other thing is just from a, a, you know, like a quote unquote, like a military standpoint, like he was going against his own unit the whole time. Like they would yeah. know him. But you know? I, I feel like they should have, like, just emphasized just a little bit. Yeah, but you would think, what's his name? Kylo Ren knew his number. Captain Phasma knew his number. Like they all knew who he was as soon as he defected. Plus, it never happened before. Like, if you see the black dude. You already know he's the little stormtrooper. That like, gotta play. like, yo, like, come on! At the like the beginning of the movie, I mean, when they're like going down there for like the first scene, you know, maybe that stormtrooper like puts his like hand on his shoulder and he's like, "It's okay, man. Don't need to be scared. It's, this is easy." You know, like something to have some type of connection, like at least a special bond to one other stormtrooper. Just, I, I like feel like there should have been some emotional something. But so you saw that one scene as more personal than I did. I just saw that was I just that yeah, random fight that way. Just a, uh, just a random fight. Just hey, yeah, I, I don't know. Like so, the the, the theory on that was <clears throat> we never saw Ray with the lightsaber, so that was all like trailer deception. I would yeah. not be surprised if they put that scene in there solely so that you would think that he was the dude that was going to have the force. Like, I wouldn't be surprised at that. Because the moment when you figure out she's the one that's actually Force-sensitive in the movie, I was like, well played. I don't feel like I know too much about this movie based on the trailer. Yeah, it's same here, same here. That's one That's one thing I hate about the fucking Superman versus Batman trailer. I feel like they're spilling too much in the trailer. Uh, Star Wars, I feel... We started, but I really <laughs> that, that that Doomsday fight is not the fight at the end of the movie. Carry on. Uh, I didn't even get that either. Um, I... I don't know, but um, I I do appreciate how like when I found out that Ren was going to be the Jedi of the movie, I was kind of like, oh shit, I did not see that coming. I'm kind of disappointed because it's not going to be the black guy just because it's not the black guy, but it's whatever. Um, that was like I I was like, oh yeah, good job. I did not see that coming. Well fucking played. Holy shit. <laughs> right. No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I was slightly sad. But I'm like, mm, maybe he'll be oh. more sensitive. I'm oh, later. another thing I appreciate is that they used the cross saber and the little side part when they were actually fighting, and she, he used the side of it to burn him. I yeah. love that part because it didn't make that little bullshit thing useless. Like, 
I was hoping in the movie that somewhere did use that somehow, and they did, and I was like, fuck yeah, and they made it very emotional, like, he was screaming in pain, like, I felt like, like, that shit probably hurts, like, I'm, with the Goku scream. I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm glad they did that the way they did, like, glad that shit wasn't useless. <laughs> I agree with that. So now I'm curious to see in like the other movies because technically any time they class lightsabers that could happen. So um I feel like that that could be something where like Ren is finding, you know, Ray and he's like getting close to like stab her with the lightsaber and then you know she's like, Holy shit, I need to get him off me now. Um But I, I, I just wanna say I, I appreciate that. Uh yeah, I'm a fan of that. But I'm also, again, I'm a fan of the expanded universe stuff. So, like, I miss the girl from the uh, the Force Unleashed that had the lightsaber Tom Claws and stuff. Yeah, like that. that that was you pretty know. badass. Um, yeah, so I want to see every different lightsaber that is possible to be different. And that's kind of what my my statement is, is we got our nostalgia movie out of the way. So, so let's I start bringing that. in so let's start bringing in like some new shit or at least not new shit but let's bring in like some shit you guys never seen that's you know part of Star Wars and let's bring out fucking I don't a black lightsaber no I'm just kidding but <laughs> no that I, we can bring out the black lightsaber that's in the Clone Wars and that thing looks ridiculous and tight yeah with the, yeah with the black lightsaber oh my with god the white outline I, oh my i'm so fucking inside I, every time i think of star wars i hate disney because they fucking stopped that in the middle of season six like mm. we we needed to finish season six and probably um depending on what they did possibly a seventh one but they didn't even finish season six they were just like yo fuck it we're gonna make a disney one and you guys you were watching this yeah you guys can eat a dick because we no longer care about it but it's on netflix if you I, I actually as much as i love that show and i'm upset that it got canceled i actually feel like it ended at a pretty good point it with, did um, it did with uh with yoda fighting count dooku which is um i wish it was a longer fight because i really love that fight with count dooku because yoda and i don't know why but yoda and count dooku in there just like we're old people but when we fight we're all hyper all over the place spinning a lot like i'm i really enjoy that fight I agree with that. I I appreciate the end of Ahsoka's or Ahsoka Tano's arc, um, and showing her as kind of the last one of the last straws in Anakin's disillusionment with the uh, Jedi Council, of kind of how they did her and made her kind of walk away. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, he seemed really like, you know what, f y'all, we set up the final movie. <clears throat> but on top of that. That can that story seems to have actually continued into Rebel, which is solid if even if it's a little bit more kid friendly, which is hard to say. Rebel is actually pretty solid from the first season I've seen. I, I'm I'm not end up watching the fucking Star Wars of Clone Wars again. Yeah, I had a week a couple, uh, like a weekend a couple weeks ago where I went kind of nitpick specific episodes like. Yeah. Return of Maul, Asajj Ventress specific episode, um, Ahsoka's final arc, the one where they're um, where they're basically fighting inside of the Force, and the two kids are the light side and the dark side, and they're fighting their father, and Ahsoka goes dark. I love that episode. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, anyway, so what else do you have about the Force Awakens though? Before we digress, people. Um. Yeah, because I, I just pulled it up on YouTube. The fucking black lightsaber. That shit's so fucking badass. Um, yes. Before, um, let's see. The ending was whatever. Um, I hate how they destroyed the planet. Pretty much oh, most of the things I don't like. I was going to say. I, okay. I, I love Star Wars. I love the Star Wars universe. And I swear to God if I have to see one more trench run. Like if, if oh ever, yeah if, if oh yeah oh yeah I yeah I I I don't I don't blame you there. That's definitely how's this gonna end? They're gonna go through a trench. They're gonna blow something up. It's gonna blow everything up. When I am a flight video game movie nerd. I love Top Gun. I love freaking Ace Combat Five. I love uh, Iron Eagle. But I swear, no more. 
Whoa. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I guess we'll, we'll end this with how do you would like the next movies to, to go off, <laughs> or how you would like them to go. Um, because we had the introduction of like, who, okay, these are the characters. She's a Jedi. This guy's bad. Shit's happening. We found Luke. I feel like the next movie, at least to me, would be okay. They they're both training. Ren is going to complete his training. Uh, we you know going with what you said um we have no idea what's gonna go what's gonna happen with luke he could for all we know is tells her to get the fuck away or she's just like all right shit what shit's happening you told me this like because i feel i don't like i could feel like that could happen where he says no but at the same time it's kind of like hey yo this guy killed han solo and that kind of drives him to like oh shit like that happened han solo is my friend you know like fuck we have to um we have to kill this fact like that drives him to like do the training if he says no um because i don't i don't i can't see the movie going without him training her like if he says no at the beginning or whatever they use him kill like han solo dying to encourage him to train her if he doesn't fully like all right cool we're gonna train and then it's gonna be them training they're of course gonna have their fight i f oh. I feel like this would be the the second movie's going to end in like the bad guy's favor. Like at the end of the movie they're going to like do like something like someone else is going to die and it's going to end like their death and they're going to lose a fight and they're all going to retreat and we're necessarily going to end this movie with in the dark side's favor and then in the third movie they'll, you know, pull some shit out of their ass and end up winning overall. And then that's how I would see the trilogy's going. Cause I don't know if it's Snook if, can Snook even use a lightsaber or he's, he's is he just some guy? Well, I'm I'm assuming Snook can use a lightsaber. I'm assuming he's gonna be like the Emperor where he uses a lot of the Force. So one of the the theories that I've seen is that Snoke might not actually be that big. Yeah, so, obviously. Yeah, I feel like he's not gonna be that big at all. So that'll be interesting for one. Um, I don't know. I I. There's one thing that we didn't touch on, and I'll I'll use it in my um, like in my answer to this is we haven't touched on the actual like humor of the movie. Oh, that was was really good. There is not a single part that I was like, "That's a bad joke. That should have not been in here." I I appreciate every every joke they did. Hands down, funniest Star Wars movie. <laughs> there were one or two for them for me that kind of bugged me, but they were fine. Like it wasn't. I don't know. It wasn't Transformers Two, basically. So yeah. that was fine with me. I I want the humor and the tone of the movies <coughs> to gradually descend. So yeah, I feel like I feel like I can see that like the first movie, like or at least the second movie, there's kind of like jokes towards the middle, uh, but like something bad happens in the middle, and then it's kind of just like nah, like maybe one before the end, like. Um, like they did, they did jokes in points where that were as long as they don't do jokes when there's like a high tension shit going down. Like, hey yo, there's nothing. They're they're just going to the base. Let's tell a joke. Hey, they're just chilling. Tell a joke, you know. Right, right. And then the uh, the droid BB-8 was perfect for some of those like acting moments. Yeah, that you get out of the like droids the, and Star like Wars the movies, th like the weren't. thumbs up part. Like the thumbs up part was probably my favorite. Right, like, I, I, I thought that was pretty cool. He pulls out a little fire <laughs> thing, and it's, it's, I thought, um, that was pretty cool. Um, I like when he went oh, R two, R two, oh, didn't do anything, and that's, he hung his head. Like, oh. that's that's another part. Like, I, I can, I appreciate, I can understand R two D two, you know, being out of commission. Why the fuck did he wait until after the planet was blown up to just, I'm just gonna magically wake up? I don't think that was magically. That that's what it seemed like, cause like it would have been cool and understanding like, hey, three sometime before this movie started, they captured R two D two and they it, they disabled him and the disables on the planet ship and they were able to keep they were able to to keep them from finding R two D two by putting him in that low power state, so they couldn't use R two D two and that's why he's disabled because if they turn him on, they'll be able to find the rebels. So when the planet was destroyed, it's like, oh, cool, we can turn on R2-D2 and see what he knows. I would have been fine with that, but it's kind of just like, 
oh, the planet blows up. I'm just gonna wake up. Hey, yo, I have the other part of the map you guys are looking for. Um, here's Luke. I don't. I think we're gonna get the explanation for that in the next one. Um, Hopefully, because the rest of that seemed too well planned, quote unquote, well planned out for it to be random that R two woke up. Like, I have a feeling that what we're gonna get off of that is basically. R2 was reactivated because someone used Luke's lightsaber. Does that make sense? Like, <clears throat> the the act of someone actually flaring up his lightsaber is what turned R2 on or something. I guess so, that. but didn't they, they have to build a connection? Like, there's there's no... Like, they would have to build a, a, a link. Like, yeah, it's Luke's light, lightsaber, you know, and they have a strong bond, but they would have to like established like even if it's like a short little five second like flashback or something like that that connects uh r2d2 with the lightsaber or something like that no i think he's gonna explain it yeah like if they can explain like him like hey long ago r2 like luke's uh, lightsaber stopped working and he was forced to use parts from r2d2 and blah 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 and it kind of built some type of bond or something whatever yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised as good as both he and and uh, Anakin were with electronics for him to have like built something into it. You know, um, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I doubt it would be anything, let's say, tied to the Millennium Falcon or anything like that. But I, I would be willing to bet that the answer is technological, not force based. Yeah. Um, um that was also that was also another thing. I don't like. I appreciate like it's weird. I appreciate them having the mil, um um the Falcon in there. I kind of wish at the beginning of the movie when you were she just running around through Jakku. If if you really paid attention, you can see the the Falcon kind of chilling in the background. Mm -hmm. Like it's not it's not obvious. Like it's not obvious. It's like an Easter egg. Like you have to like. Was that the Falcon in the background? Did anyone else see the Falcon in the background? And not like, holy shit, that's the Falcon in the background. Oh my god. I hope they used it. You know, like an Easter egg. Because I, I kind of don't like how it just popped out of nowhere. Um, like, I, I, like, I understand it was, like... <laughs> I understand that's like how else was you know Han like I can't see how they Han Han was gonna find these without using the Falcon, but I kind of wish that if they were gonna use the Falcon like a little Easter egg, like at some point it's kind of just chilling in the background like, like maybe if they did a like a quick scene from inside the ship but only hardcore fans knew that it was the Falcon and stuff like that like something like that where they used the Fal like the Falcon beforehand. But you had to be like a hardcore fan or it's an Easter egg that you realize like, holy shit, was that what I think it was? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I wouldn't be surprised with that, but they used it so much in the trailer that like, I wouldn't be surprised if we went back and watched that movie again since <clears throat> where she stole it from. You yeah, know, like if we, we saw it. Plus, I love yeah. the part where he's like, she's like, that ship, that ship's a hunk of junk. And then the one they run to is the Millennium Falcon. You're like, oh shit! That's yeah, where it's gonna come. that's also another thing. Like, hey, look, the the fucking stormtroopers that ship they're running to destroyed it on the first try. The ship that they took a while to launch, no, let's miss it a few times. That's stormtroopers, bro. That's I know, but life. like, they could at least done like two waves to destroy the ship. So it's not like, hey, look, there's that ship they're running to destroyed instantly. Here's that ship they really didn't want to go to. Bigger target. No, we're gonna have problems. Yeah, but it's the Falcon, man. Yeah, I know. Oh, parsec, son. <laughs> that's, um, what, that's why I, I, that's one of my passes. It's, it's just little, that's just me nitpicking. Um, like, it's not like, oh my god, no! It's kind of just like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Whatever. So, to answer your question, now that we have the original, like, not the original, now that we have all the fan service out of the way, I hope they tell us a new story. And that's. My yeah, ideas, yeah. Um, I'm hoping we see some like crazy shit that we like. I'm not saying we we should get like a Sith. Like Snook is a Sith mage. That would have been really cool if he's like really huh. really strong in the Force and didn't even use a lightsaber or some <clears throat> shit like that. You know, that's just me being pet. Pe but like, I'm hoping they pull some like something really some cool ass shit. Like, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. Yeah, I just want to see this this world go in yeah. different directions. Some of those tropes we can start to let go. 
and yeah. let the universe grow, and then we'll be good. And then General Grievous reincarnation. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'd rather see Asajj than Grievous. Asajj. That sounds familiar. Asajj Ventress. Um, how's that spelled? The Sith Lady. Oh, A S A J J. A S. A wait. A S A J J. And then space. V E N. T R E S S. We're gonna get a Clone Wars cameo. I want Asajj or Ahsoka. <laughs> oh, her. Yeah. I'll take either of those two if we're getting a cameo from Clone Wars. Um, Definitely. So, I, I, I'm, that's another thing. I'm hoping in the next <laughs> Star Wars, uh, the next movie, there's. I'm hoping there's at least three lightsaber fights. Um, that's me pushing it. I'm hoping there's at least two. Just like, hey, here's one at the ending to do the dramatic, like, oh, okay, this is going to be a long fight scene where they put everything to the test. And maybe, like, there's another one where they're kind of just like, oh, shit, we ran into each other. And they're kind of just fighting just to hold off. Like, one of them escaping or something like that to where they're just distracting and they're just fighting and just trying to distract. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be nice if they had, like, a third one in there for whatever reason. But I'm hoping there's at least two. Because um, in this one, there's only... I mean, yeah, Finn used a lightsaber. I don't really... Um, count that. I don't really count that. Because I don't, I don't know why he's fuck able to use a lightsaber. <laughs> and one, why he's able to use a melee weapon. He's a stormtrooper. They use guns. Unless they have, yeah, like, a but, answer to that. Um, yeah, but they use... Uh, they're still being trained like soldiers. Marines use guns, but they'll fight you. I understand that, but it's a melee weapon. How many stormtroopers, period, use a melee weapon? Um, in Star Wars Out fiction, surprisingly a lot. Well, they're usually generals, like people of higher power. Like, it's rarely a basic trooper. Yeah, but that was, <coughs> excuse me, more of a stun rod. Hold on one second. <coughs> oh, that's another Sorry. thing. Um, in, look, in Star Wars fiction, there always tends to be some quote-unquote class of characters that can fight a Jedi who uses a lightsaber with something else. Like, for example, they're normally like those little stun sticks. Yeah, but usually, like usually they're general key. like usually they're people in higher power though. Or like no, not really, because Palpatine's guard had uh, anti lightsaber weapons too. So you see that stuff. Like yep. you run through like Jedi outcast. It's not um, that strange. It's not as strange but, as you're making it sound, basically. Yeah, but here's something I'm sure you can agree on. Um, the fucking clone, the the stormtrooper in Chrome, the the, the lady. Who, I like her as a character. I wish she did more shit than she did in the movie. She didn't do jack shit other than disable the shields. And yeah, but there's a bunch of people like that that didn't really have a lot to do yet. Yeah, uh, at least with her. I just heard, like, out of everyone in the movie, I'm just disappointed that she wasn't more in the movie. I, I kind of wish there were should have been, like, something. Even, even the part where he's, like... When he's getting the inspection over over his blaster and something like that, even if it's like a short scene of them just um, him, her interviewing him, entering Finn and Finn, like you kind of get like more, or maybe a little bit more of his backstory and find out more of like, hey, um, they're getting on to you. You're kind of not really um, a stormtrooper, and they may capture you or something like that, and that puts the pressure for him. Like, oh shit, I need to get out of here. Right. We're going to get more Captain Phasma. I feel like she's going to be uh, Finn's uh, Kylo Ren, basically. Yeah, because... So she's um, going to be his villain. Kylo Ren is going to be Rey's. And then uh, Luke is going to be for Snoke. Yeah. But I'm all um, about in martial arts movies I'm, or martial movies. Like, basically, I'm what are the I'm, matchups? I'm hoping she's not dead. Because last in, time we heard, we put her in the trash collector or trash compactor. I swear to God, if she died there... I would be so upset. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a that was an inside joke. Like, though. yeah, I'm 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 down. I thought that was hilarious. That was probably that was I'm gonna say that was probably my favorite joke. I'm just hoping she did not die there. She was too cool of a character to die off screen that way. True, but she's also too big of an actress for that. Like, it's not her role wasn't like the dead the Daniel Craig cameo, right? So we're going to see Phasma again um, because she's Brianna Tarth from Game of Thrones. Like, we'll yeah. see her again. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, that's just, I know I, there's, 
one percent chance that she died there. But I'm just saying if that one percent chance happened, I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be a little as the kids would say, salty. Yeah, you can you can rage out if that happens. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah. So where do you feel like it's going then? With the the second movie? Or... The, yes, you can go further if you want, but yeah. No, I, that was pretty much it. Like, I feel like the next movie is gonna <laughs> the gonna go in the Sith uh, favor, um, and then the last one's gonna be like fine. I feel like Luke's gonna die. I don't know why. Like it's. It's a low chance, but I feel like Luke's going to die. I feel like if Luke dies, he doesn't die until the third movie. I feel um, like and I'm, if I'm, Luke and Rey are the only Jedi in the next movie, I'm going to be kind of sad, but only kind of. Oh, oh. yeah, I can understand that. I'm, I'm hoping there's more. Not necessarily, like... Jedi's that come out of nowhere, but if like Luke knew, like, all right, I know a guy who uses the, like who also uses the light, uh, the Force, and he's the Jedi, and we kind of let's uh, let's go get him and recruit him, or you know, for some reason they have to go, you know, find him or whatever. Or he pops out of nowhere, or you know, Luke calls him up or something. Um, I'm hoping there's also another. I'm hoping there's also another a uh, Sith. Uh, uh, wielding there other than Snoot, like not necessarily just another main villain, but just another villain in general. Like it could be even another like a dark mall where they fight him once, they run away, they fight him again, and he dies. I mean that would be suck because Dark Maul is a good ass character. Um, I'm just hoping there's more lightsaber wielders and the ne in the next two movies because <laughs> love lightsaber fights and of course. Me being me, I, I I will always love scenes where it's just like, hey, here's five five Jedi's versus five Siths, and then there's the two main characters fighting there too. I uh, the freaking Star Wars trailer uh, for one of the the MMOs, I fucking mm -hmm. love that trailer. Uh, I'll probably send the link if I can find it, but if it's for the most recent one where the dad is uh, the the master. Like if the dad is like the the shadow emperor, and there's the dark side kid and the light side kid, but they're out just kind of trying to please their dad. That one I've seen, and it's epic. Um, I think my favorite lightsaber fights from the series are Asajj and Obi Wan versus Maul and Savage Opress in this really small space. They're in like a cargo container. Is it for really Star Wars: The Clone Wars? Yes. Ah, oh, because I was just rolling. I was literally just playing them all in the background. And then there was another one that was uh, Found it. Darth Maul and Savage again against um, Obi-Wan and another random Jedi. She looks like a black lady. I can't think of her name, but she's an alien. Um, and then that lady gets killed. And then it's just Obi-Wan versus those two. That fight is amazing. See, okay, I found the trailer I was talking about. It's a Star Wars The Old Republic cinematic trailer where they have the guy who has, like, half his face is, like, a mask, but he's bald. Um, and stuff like that, and you can see his veins and stuff like that. I fucking absolutely love this trailer. Because um, they have a whole bunch of Sith versus a whole bunch of Jedis, and they're just going at it. I love him as a villain. He, scary, powerful, you, you just looking at him gives you, like, like, just looking at him it brings fear. You know, like, I, I freaking love this trailer. I've watched this too many times. Yes. Yes. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. You can give me Bastila with Shan any day. Um, all right. So, anything else we need to cover, sir? Mm, no, nah, you good? <laughs> Daisy Ridley is amazing, and I love her. <laughs> Ren, be more evil. <laughs> That would be great. I I I oh, love I great. love super evil villains, because I'm a Sith guy. I, I'm I'm a bad guy. I don't want her to be evil. I just feel like that actress has a really good range. So I think it would be cool to see her tempted her temptation. Like I think that would be tight. I really like that lady. Um, also, she also, was easily the best part of the movie, and we haven't really mentioned her, but she's really good. Also, 
what are you what are you like a Jedi or a Sith? Like if you were in the Star Wars and you were either good or evil. I don't really mm, I, I wouldn't be either. I would be uh yeah, okay, okay, Star Wars. His name? Like I would be straight like Jolie Bendo. Where else follow the rules sometimes and i kind of do my own thing other times like, that's you know. what i saw you would be i feel like you would be in the middle like you would be the person who was like a jedi or a sith and then you abandoned them and you're like now nah, i'm gonna do my own thing later yeah like i got all the training good on that but sometimes i just don't agree with you guys and i feel like people should be able to get married you know do what you want love somebody just don't be crazy so I'm gonna go over here and live on the, the forest floor of Kashyyyk by myself and just chill with the Wookiees. Now what? I mean, me. Ma I mean, Mace Windu got launched and he got shocked to shit, but I feel like he's not dead. <laughs> oh Lord! I know. Mace gone. Yeah, I know. Purple lightsaber guy. Out of these MF lightsabers on this MF Coruscant. For real. Ooh, one other thing. It'd be really tight if we went to Nar Shaddaa. That's all. I'm done. Nashada. That's. I'm bad with names. It's familiar, but I can't remember. <laughs> Nashada. Nashada is like the Jabba's palace of planets. Oh. Like it's like, oh. Um, not Ilium on um, a Mass Effect, but it's like Omega. Yeah. Okay, I remember. It's like where you go to hire all the bad guys. It's like, what is the place in. Um, Oh, I can't think of I can't, I don't know why I can't. It's like Tortuga. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Star Wars Tortuga, though. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. All right, then, man. I'm um, thank you for coming. Once again, his links and everything like that, it's just, just Twitter. It will be in the description below. All my links and everything like that will be in the description below. I do want to thank you. Go ahead, like, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell him to like, comment, subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Like, comment, and subscribe. All right, One nation. <laughs> Later.